So one of the learnings was that all these things that we talked about, you know, these uh, different tools, whether it's the Toyota production system, uh, team topologies, DevOps, these are all incomplete expressions of a far greater whole, and that we can explain what they do and why they work in, uh, in three ways. Uh, and so, without a doubt, this project has been the most intellectually challenging project ever worked on, uh, but also the most rewarding. In fact, there was a point about uh, a year ago where uh, I felt that Steve and I were stuck. This is uh, during the summer. Uh, and I felt like we just couldn't come up with a model that was truly simple, that demonstrated the principles that we were writing about. And I told my boss, my wife, uh, Marguerite, uh, that I was going to go on a walk on the beach, and I wasn't going to come back until it was clear in my head. And so six miles later, uh, I was convinced that I wasn't smart enough to understand what Steve was trying to explain to me, uh, or I didn't understand software well enough, or and in, in this quest of trying to come up with a simple scenario, I learned that I didn't understand movie theater operations or restaurant operations. Uh, and it's a very interesting feeling to, uh, you know, question, you know, to feel like you're not smart enough to finish a project that you started. Uh, and that's what led to uh, building a scenario that was an extension of a scenario that we had written earlier to explore what coordination cost looks like um, around moving and painting. And so the, uh, the top, uh, the, so that led to the moving a couch vignette, uh, where Steve and Gene tried to move a couch. And that's really a metaphor uh, for joint problem solving. Uh, and so regardless of domain, uh, you know, eventually at some point you have people who have to need to work together that requires communication and coordination. Uh, and that led to the second metaphor of moving uh, Steve and Gene trying to move and paint um, a house to support uh, the spouses uh, and hopelessly screwing it up. Right? And that became a metaphor of how do you integrate the work of multiple functional silos uh, towards common purpose. And really the aha moment is uh, you know, if Steve and Gene can screw up such a simple system, just imagine how spectacularly you can screw up a far more complex system with more functional specialties, with more complexity, with more, um, uh, uh, c with more hazard and so forth. So uh, that was certainly one aha moment. The second one is uh, about uh, the three mechanisms. So one is slowification, the second is uh, uh, simplification, and the, second, uh, the third is amplification. And I'm never going to get through my slides, but I will end on time. <laughs> so uh, you know, one, of, you know, one of the things that I learned uh, working with Steve is that uh, you, know, you have to have uh, time scheduled for planning and practice so that you're not doing the most dangerous work in production, in performance, uh, where uh, you can't do work where you have high stakes uh, and be able to fail, learn, and improve. Um, and so whenever you look at uh, things in our space where you, know, you take a look, most, look at the most reliable, uh, secure, uh, operable sites on the planet, you know, Amazon, Google, Netflix, Vanguard, uh, you know, what looks like um, you know, something that they've just figured out, it turns out they were investing far beforehand in terms of planning and practice. Um, so that turns out it's based on uh, the work of Kahneman and Tversky. Uh, so this is what won them, uh, Dr. Kahneman, the Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences in 2002, I think. And it's really uh, the notion that you know, there's fast and slow thinking. Fast, and think fast thinking is where we use our biases, habits, and routines, right? But those are created during this more slow thinking processes where that can be deliberative, creative, and contemplative. And if leaders don't create the time to generate, uh, to allow for slow thinking, uh, you know, you, we are in a hopeless situation. And that's just not in software, uh, but that's also in um, you know, every other work domain as well. Uh, and turns out there's actually no word in English that we could find uh, that actually really describes this concept of slowing down to speed up, of you know, stop sawing to sharpen the saw. Uh, and ChatGPT is so good at language, and it's just amazing uh, that you know, I asked for 80 different uh, words. None of them were satisfactory. The best word it could come up with, uh, we thought there would be a German word for it, and it's Vorausplanungsverbesserung, uh, uh, and it just didn't fit on the book cover. So we, yeah. we chose not to use that. Um, Simplification. I just want to share this. Um, and so in simplification, one of the most uh, mechanisms that we use a lot in software is around modularization. And so in the ideal, everyone's working on solving important problems all the time uh, in parallel. And it's, they can do this because everyone has what they need in the right format at the right time, and they're interacting with the right people. And in uh, our world, I think one of the most famous examples was Amazon. Life was pretty easy when you're in Amazon in 1988. They only had two categories, books and music. Um, and, you know, life got a little bit more complicated by 2002 where they had, you know, not two categories, but 32 product categories. And uh, they got to a point where, uh, you know, they had, you know, scores of teams who had to communicate and coordinate where no one could get work done. 
uh, Dr. Werner Vogel described this kind of absurd situation in 2005 where uh, the digital teams uh, were required to f- provide a physical shipping address, you know, to buy a Kindle or a video, right, which was so absurd, but there was no way around this. They had to go to 80 different teams, you know, asking to kind of uh, work around this, but they said, you know what, we didn't budget for it, and they were stuck. And so what's astonishing is that, you know, things ground to a halt, uh, and this is what led to, you know, the Amazon API um, billion-dollar rearchitecture. And I used, uh, you know, in past presentations, this diagram to show kind of like what, you know, complexity and uh, uh, highly coupled architectures look like. This turns into this, which is not so good, that eventually turns into this. So I want to share this learning with you uh, that really a better metaphor might be gears, right? Uh, You're in a very bad situation where in order to do what you need to get done, you have to communicate and coordinate with scores of other teams. And so you can't move your piece without all the other team members are agreeing to move their piece, right? And so this is where I have to communicate, coordinate, schedule together, prioritize together, worse yet, deploy together. And so by decoupling, this is what allows independence of action. And so independence of action also comes, can, uh, can be traced back to another Nobel Prize winner, uh, which is Dr. Merton, uh, Dr. Fisher, and Black uh, around option theory, where they essentially, what earned them the Nobel Prize was their observation that decoupling decisions tomorrow from conditions today creates incredible latitude of action. And so the link here is that by decoupling things spatially as opposed to in time, you create independence of action that otherwise wouldn't have existed. And uh, to summarize, uh, you know, is that just gears? Imagine if each one of these were roulette wheels, right? The ability to spin these wheels independently, you know, win money independently, right, creates amazing fortune, right? And so um, Dr. Carlos Baldwin described how in the IBM th- System 360 project in the 1960s, it enabled 25 times more value creation. And she wrote, when there's 25 times more value creation for users, there's so much value that the entire economy will rearrange itself to accommodate this. Venture capitalists will deploy capital just to get a piece of the surplus. And so I think that was certainly uh, a way to think about sort of what has been done in the software space that is equally applicable you know, in every other domain as well.